In this video, we'll be coding art for the Commodore 64 in BASIC. So, turn on your Commodores and let's get started. When it comes to designing art for the Commodore 64, there's a lot of different ways that we can do so. In this video, we'll be creating pixel art that we can use by using a square Petsky character and then code that to create our pixel art. In the future, we'll go over even more ways to make art, but we're gonna start simple for this first video. Now, when it comes to actually designing the art, there's two paths that you can take. You could use colored pencils and design your art on paper and then code them in later. And if you would like to go that route, I actually created a template that you can get completely free on my website, spellthorn.com. I will put a link to it in the description. You can actually print it out and color your art, which is a lot of fun. The other way to make art is by using digital tools. If you're on an iPad, you could use something like PicSquare. That's what I do. Or if you're on a computer, you could use some softwares or even some free softwares like photopia.com or the tool that we'll be using in this video. So as you can see, there's a lot of different ways to make pixel art, but coding them all become the same way. So let's get started. All right, so to get started, we can go up to create new screen. Uh, we'll just call this adventure. It's our character set is the C64 uppercase. Uh, we have 40 columns and 25 rows. Uh, when you click this in here, you're going to have a few different things. Uh, by default, I think the sprite table is open. You can turn that off by clicking the little uh, toggle sprite table. Um, and then this is our Commodore 64 screen. At the top, we have our 16 colors, 0 through 15. Uh, we have a pencil icon, which allows us to uh, draw onto the screen. Uh, we also have a, a fill icon, which allows us to fill the screen. And then we also, over here, we have our character sense. So these are the two characters that we're going to be using in uh, our design today. Uh, the first character is going to be the blank square at the top right. This is going to be technically used as our eraser. Or we're going to delete everything out. And then if we do want to add in our character, we can use our pencil tool and click this one right here, which is our solid. And then this is going to allow us to design it. And then, of course, we can just use different colors uh, to design uh, what we want uh, in pixel art and then if you want to erase it uh, you just go through and switch to the blank character and then you can erase stuff uh, we also have one other tool that we might use if you make any mistakes you can uh, click the select area tool and select your uh, stuff and then you can move it to a different location especially if you want to like copy paste and then you can hit the little uh, green check mark at the top. It does not delete what you moved from. So then you'd have to go back in and delete the other stuff if needed. Uh, but that's pretty much what we'll do. We're just going to go through here and create our designs. Uh, you can also change the background if you need to uh, by doing uh, by clicking there. And then also uh, that's our border. And then also you can change the background if needed. Um, but we're just going to stick with the defaults and then we can change the background afterwards. Uh, that way we can uh, go through it. And then, of course, since we're using just this character right here, there's a lot of different characters that you can use. But we'll do more uh, tutorials on that in the future. Um, but right now we're just going to use the solid block character. And then we can also click up here uh, to toggle our grid. This allows us to get a little grid icon and then essentially you could just design your uh your art here and like you said if you do the pencil on paper you could just recreate it here if you wanted to um i've already created the art so i'm just going to quickly go through and and recreate it again for you to see it um and i'll actually speed that process up but that's all we're going to do we're just going to uh, start designing our art here um it's good to kind of think of it in little sections um here uh, on the foot we have a little square so i'll do a square and then next to that it looks like we have a little um, angle piece so we can kind of do that uh, there's a lot of different squares on here so trying to keep track of going them in a little bit order will make it a little bit easier for you uh, I try to do two at a time if I can or or rows of three uh, just to kind of keep me uh, in sections of course if you're doing this by scratch then you would just figure out on the fly um, but if you've rec you know trying to recreate it um, that's an easy way to kind of do that uh, just keeping track of little sections here and there uh, so that way you don't get overwhelmed. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to kind of speed through this and I'll fast forward it and then I'll, I'll show you when it's all done and we can start coding uh, the icon into actual uh, the game. And if you make a mistake, you can actually undo it. 
um, by clicking the little undo right here. So we're done with our art. Uh, it looks very pretty. Let's go ahead and switch the border to black. And there we go. We now have our art. Now, coding the art is pretty simple when it comes to what we do. We use the scene Petsky character, which was this one. So we don't have to keep track of that. Oh, I missed a little spot here switch that to brown um, but we did use a lot of different colors so all we have to do is keep track of our colors and we can use this to code now with using this tool uh, this tool is designed to make your life easier we can actually go up to the export screen button and there's a few different exports that we can do we can export to a png if we wanted to keep our own image um, we can also export to a runnable program file uh, which i'll show you in a moment but we we can also export to raw bytes. And if we click this button, this gives us all of the bytes or all of the data that we need in order to code our game. Now, as you can see here, the character codes are all 160. We use 160 for all of them. So we'll actually do that a little bit different on the Commodore. Um, but uh, with our color codes, we can actually turn it off. With our color codes, this is what we use. We can turn off comments, uh, but these are all of the colors that we use. And if we go row by row, we use color, uh, this color right here, which is color four. So the first ones are four, then we use black, which is zero, then we use four. Uh, which is uh, the purple and then we use black again and that's essentially what the bytes are what the color codes are so all we have to do is use these to actually code this into our game so i'm going to copy this and we can open up notepad real quick and we can just paste this in so we can see what it looks like this is our data um, if we zoom it out then this is what creates our image now we're gonna to type all of these in <laughs> which is going to take us some time um, but that's how you'll do it so we can actually minimize it a little bit this would be row one row two row three etc so let's move this off the screen and let's load up our commodore all right so with our commodore 64 on let's start actually coding out how we can use this data to create our game so first what we'll do is we can just do uh 10 poke and then we're going to change the background color to match. So we'll do 53280. This will be our border. We'll make it zero for black. We're going to poke 53281, comma zero. This will make our background black. And then we're going to just uh, clean the screen by print chr dollar sign 147. Perfect. So this should give us a blank background. Now what we need to do is we need to loop through all of our squares that we made. We have 40 horizontal, 25 vertical. That means there's 1,000 squares that we need to not only type in the color codes for, but also render to the screen. We can actually do this with a simple for loop. So we'll do four, uh, 24i is equal to 0, 2 nine 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 because zero to a you know to nine 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 is one thousand then what we can do is we can read our color data and we can actually just do 30 read and we'll give it a variable and our variable will just use the letter c you can use whatever you want c for color we'll use c and now what we can do is we can poke our data into our uh memory so we can do this by doing 40 poke and our uh, character memory is going to start at 1024 and then we just need to pass in i because we're doing a for loop and then because we use the entire blocks we use a solid block on every single character we can actually just 
punch them all as 160, which was the character that we were using, which is the solid block. So this allows us not have to type in every character we use. If you use Petsky characters, you would. You'd have to type in all, you'd make a data for all the Petsky characters and then data for all the colors. But we use the same Petsky character for everything. We filled in every single block. So we're going to use 160. Now what we need to do is we need to poke into our color menu memory so we can do poke and then we can do five five two nine six this is where our color memory starts and then we're going to pass in i as well because we're going to add i to it the first time we go through it'll be five five two nine six second time will be it'll add one so five five two nine seven etc the whole way up to one thousand and then we need to pass in our actual data which in this case we read c so we're going to pass in c what this does is it's going to go through each for loop and it's going to check what is the next data in my data set um because we're going to write data instead of byte but um, it's going to check the next data and it's just going to add it. All right, this one is this one. This one is this one. This one is this one. And it's going to go through all 1,000 of them. Now, because we are doing a for loop, we want to make sure that we increase it. So we'll hit next. And then just because I don't want the game to end when we've printed everything, we're going to get uh, some uh, input. So we'll do 70, get a dollar sign. And then we're going to check if a dollar sign is equal to blank. Uh, then we're just going to, then we'll go to 70. This keeps us in a loop until we press something. And then uh, because I want the program to end, but also to change the colors back, we'll do one more. We'll do 80 if a dollar sign is not equal, uh, oops, is not equal to blank. Then we're going to print the screen, chr dollar sign 147. We're going to then poke our colors back, 53280 is 14, and then 53281 is 6. So essentially, we're going to run our commands, uh, and then we're going to bring our colors back. Now what we can do is we can pass in our data and we'll skip ahead a little bit and then to do that we can just write data and now all we have to do is we just have to start writing in our color codes now the issue with this is these are small numbers just single digits but we're still going to have too many because we're writing 40 of them um because there's 40 uh blocks on on a row so we're writing 40 of them so we're going to have to split this up and we can actually do uh data four uh, and then we can start counting them so it's two four six eight ten twelve 14, 16, 18, 20, 22 fours. Um, so let's just split it in half to make it easier to read. We'll do 20, 20, 20. We'll do two sets of data for each uh, row. So we'll do four. Let's do this 20 times. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this would be the first half of our data on a row. Uh, let's just add another one. We'll do 110 data, and then we'll do the other half. It was two more fours, and then we had two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then we had four fours and we had two zeros. Cool. So this is how we would have to do that. That's one row. We've written one row. Now we have to write another row and we got 24 more to go. Um, so let's do one more and then I'm going to uh, cheat a little. <laughs> so well, the next one is 10, 10, 10, 10. Then we'll do four, 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 and then 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. I don't know how many that is, but we'll just leave it at that. And then we'll do data. And then we stopped at four, 
four zero 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 four 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 zero and as you can see this takes a lot of time <laughs> it takes a very long time which is quite uh, upsetting but we do have modern tools and i'll show you how uh, we can uh, code that with modern tools but let's go ahead and run this real quick just to see where we're at so here we are we have it now we're running out of data because i did not finish the data um, but i am just going to cheat a little bit just to show you the final result but you would have to go through and type in all of the rest of the data but since i've done this many times for this video i'm going to take a shortcut and then in the future, I'll show you how I took that shortcut. Uh, so make sure you subscribe. But give me a moment and I'll show you the final product. All right, so I've written everything in. We can list out our program just to see all the stuff that we'll have to type in. Oh yeah, so much to type in. Now we can run our program and see what it looks like. So with us using basic, it's gonna go through line by line and start creating our art, which is really, really cool. But as you can see, basic does take a long time in the future we'll actually be switching to assembly because assembly is much quicker but here's our beautiful beautiful art that we just designed on paper or on the tool and then we were able to code it into a commodore 64 game and actually uh, see it live on the screen which is awesome it looks fantastic uh, so let's go ahead and close out of this now one cool thing about this tool that i said is you can uh, click export screen and you can actually export to a runnable PRG file. What this will do is it will actually create the game for us or run this screen for us and it's going to be done in assembly which will be much much faster. So if we actually drag that file into our uh, emulator, uh, let me do that here, it's actually going to load it and immediately just show the screen and this is why you really should be using assembly rather than basic because assembly is much faster and it loaded our our art immediately but uh it is really cool that you can also test that with that tool which is again why i recommend you do use the tool if you're making art because it'll it'll just do the program file for you you don't have to type anything in but obviously you can't then edit that code because uh, if we actually end this uh and uh, we can print chr 147 you see it's kind of weird but if you list it out it, it's just a program so um, that's why you would write it yourself but we will definitely do that in the future so get subscribed but i'd love to see what art you guys make hopefully uh, this taught you something new about making pixel art for the commodore 64 using basic and uh and more videos to come i hope you have a great day